Hey guys, we're back here with Paolo Piazza Musso at Piazza Motorsport to have a look at a C10 build. You'll see it's the second week now and we're still not ready for paint. So like I said in previous episodes, it doesn't happen overnight. This is a proper, a proper build done the right way, form over function and function over form. Paolo, we've, I've seen there's a lot of interesting things going on here. You've, you've finally got that intercooler in place. Now that, that's your final destination, you're happy with that? We are indeed. Like I said to you last time, we did a bit of a head scratching. So the location of the intercooler is not the difficult part, it's the plumbing to the supercharger that's going to be the challenge. So yeah, now we've got it in position, now we can start to play with our pipes and uh, get it all hooked up. Yeah, so we had a brief chat when I got you, okay? And I've, I've got a little bit of mechanical knowledge, not a whole lot, but a little bit. So, but what I understand is that a pipe's gotta go from there, right, as you can see, to here. But now you can't see my hand because there's all of this in front, right? So somehow Paolo's going to pump plumb pipes from here all the way around this massive intake for the supercharger, run through here and into the intercooler to get it to work. Now, a brief, just a brief description of an intercooler. So what it does basically is cools the air that goes to the supercharger, correct? Quite right, yeah. All right, so cold air, go into, into, into engine, make bang, go fast. That's, that's the basic simple idea of it, as, as I understand it. A few other things that we've done that, well, we've done, I wasn't a part of this. Paolo did inside here is, I know it's just a water catch tank, okay? So this is for excess water through the radiator to come into here, um, and it just stores it and stops it from making a mess. But if you can see the little bit, this is not just a piece of steel cut and put on here. It's actually like a nice little engineered bracket just to hold this. Most people would use just a simple silicone or rubber pipe. No, no, no. Pilot's going to go full braided hose to catch it. So to keep in line with everything that's going on in this car, braided hose just for a water catch tank. Pilot, brilliant, dude. Yeah, thank you. Like I said to you before, it's uh, all in the detail. So yeah, we pride ourselves in that, and uh, that's what stands these kind of builds aside from uh, the rest. Another thing we got to talk about is as I walked around the car this morning, I've noticed there's bits of wood. <laughs> Sorry, very crude, but there's they've actually done. You've done a side skirt. Is it a template or is that gonna is that gonna stay that look? I'm Geppetto this week. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we, we start with wood or cardboard. That's always a good platform to, to start with. Um, this gives us an idea of what we're looking for. It allows us to you know play around with the design and uh, the form. And uh, when we're happy with that, then that obviously will go off for molding, and then we'll make the, the product in fiber. Okay, so it actually gets fibered and then put on and obviously painted either with a car or in black. If the, uh, you, do you go in the black and yellow bumblebee look? Yeah, the, the idea of the truck is to have um, in that like Audi Grey, if I can mention that manufacturer. Um, and uh, then all these parts like the skirts and that will be done in a high gloss black. Oh, awesome. So it just actually almost separates the car from the road. And I like that look. It actually like creates a sort of, makes it look like a float on, on the shadow. It's quite lacquer. So it's it going to go all around the car. There is one on the front, I'm assuming, as well. And then the diffuser, which we talked about, which we'll go into now at the back of the car, is also something you're doing in the same process. But you did tell us about the interior. Um, we did give it a brief look, but you've done some more work in there? We have. So the center console's basically almost finalized. And uh, so you can have a look inside. We'll show you what we've done. <clears throat> so, yeah, we try to create the... A nice flown console, so we, we can mount the TV screen, we've done cup holders, um, we've got uh, the aircon controls, the aircon ducts, the, the speakers, they will all be mounted um, on the centre console. Um, initially I wanted to do everything in leather, but the client came up with quite a good idea that the centre part be painted same colour as the car, and then the sides be done in, in, in leather, so that's quite exciting, I think it will look quite good. There's a lot of little details here that I'm, that I'm loving, and I don't know if we got them all, but like for instance, your, your, your cubby hole. Like most of you, if you feel in most cars, it almost feels like plasticky and, and it's made out of wood or, I mean not wood, uh, cardboard or, or nothing too sturdy. You've actually gone and fabricated one out of complete steel with the hole for the lock and everything. So that, that is, that, that takes a little bit of, of interesting effort to do. Wow. Yeah, so we've uh, fabricated our own cubby hole, also because the aircon system sits behind it, so the space is quite limited. But this will be all encased in three-dimensional leather with foam, so it will give it some nice form. And yeah, we've done it all in-house. So an actual 3D, an actual, it'll give it a bit of a 3D look, a bit of a, a, a filled out look. So it'll actually look very much like a, an, an Aston Martin sort of vibe with the, the diamond stitching and that sort of, that sort of thing. What's also cool is the, the, what you've done with the pipe here to actually get it to bend and, and form 
the dashboard. I'm very I'm very impressed with the amount of fabrication and steelwork that goes into there. More on the on the steelwork though, you, you we did have a look at the back of the bed, and the one con the one thing you mentioned is how you're going to pipe it and, and put everything in for the for the compressors, and I see it's in already. So we discussed about these pockets that were created, so now you can actually see what we're doing. So in this pocket here, we've created the, the ability to fit all the air ride stuff, so the pumps, the distributor, everything will sit inside here. We've created access panels so we can get in to service them and, and fix them. And the same on the other side now with uh, the fueling system. So we've got the pumps, we've got um, the, um, my bad. What was it? Uh, we've got the surge tank in place, um, so yeah, it's coming along nicely, things are starting to take shape. No, it really is starting to look like, uh, you can now start to see where everything's going, it's actually quite cool. The one thing that I, I keep going back to <laughs> is the fact that we're going to cover this, that we, I keep saying we like I'm building this car, the fact that you're going to cover this up, okay, like I said to you, you know, at the end of the show, I would take a piece of Perspex, put it over here, you know, I'd, I'll put a bit of clear coat on so I don't get any rust. Put a piece of Perspex over here and call it a day. Because the work that's in here is absolutely phenomenal. And no one's going to get to see it because it's covered. But on that note, um, I'd like to see how it's covered. But before we get there, I just want to have a look. Because we spoke about this last week. Is these little doohickeys, which uh, Paolo went and machined up. And he's actually put on the bottom here. So if you have a look here, I actually showed you where it was going to go last week and, we, and where it was going to weld and how it's threaded through the bottom just to bolt it in. So this is what holds the diffuser. But Paolo has gone and, and been quite ingenious with the way, I think, in my opinion, how he's going to design it. Taking the piece, of, taking the wood, machined it down or, or beveled the edges and created a proper template that this can now go and get fibered and put on and have that gloss black finish. And what it does is it just gives a full retro mod of the vehicle and I think, I think the vision is very impressive, Paolo. Good job. No, thank you very much, and uh, I think uh, we're getting there. Right. Um, is there any possibility that you could show us what's going on on the back here? Yeah, let's have a look. Okay, Paolo, so now yourself and Edson have gotten this on now. Obviously, it's, it's pre-cut and everything fitted to it. It's, it's not bolted down, so you will see it move and, and have a bit of a shape to it. But it's, it's basically zinc roofing plate to give it the, 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 the contours and the look without you having to do it, or is it, did you buy a flat sheet and do this? Now we bought a flat sheet of um, two millimeter steel, and uh, we had the a bead roller basically create the form because we wanted to replicate the original bed look. So now this has all been custom made. Wow, that that is so. You know, you know, often you'll you'll see on on many cars, even modern cars at the moment, they've got this this ridging in it through the bottom of the floor. Um, and so instead of just lifting it up and putting a flat sheet on because it's a completely different floor, you've gone and remade the floor look to keep it the same. Are you going to keep it, uh, what, what are you, you going to rubberize it or, or paint it or? Ah, first of all, a, sh a flat sheet of steel wouldn't work. Um, it has no rigidity or strength in it, so it just rattle around. So this is actually a, not only a look, but it's a form as well. So it brings uh, structure and strength to the, to the metal. Um, yeah, we are going to paint it in a high gloss color. Um, we weren't sure if we we're going to go black or gray like the truck, but uh, the client would like it gray. So it's going to be basically a, a, a show off piece. Wow. Absolutely phenomenal. Again, form with function. It's no longer form over function. You, you, you kind of do form with function. So it does its job, it does what it needs to do, and it looks pretty in the process. So quite a lot done this week. And uh, your plans for next week? Okay, Carl, first of all, what's growing on me is the fact of that window on the back bed. Um, I've looked at it and I, I think that's a great idea. So I'm going to have a look if we can incorporate it, chat to the client and see if we can make it work. I think that's a brilliant idea. In terms of work for next week, um, the plumbing of the intercooler is going to be quite a challenge. So we're going to see if we can get that done and sorted. Um, I'm waiting for the silences to arrive. So if they arrive early next week, then I'd like to get the exhaust system done. And then uh, the final bit would be to start creating the engine bay covers. Yeah, look, I think that intercooler for me would be a month's job on its own. So if that if that is something that you could get done in a week, I'd be I'd be pretty much blown away. I'm super glad that one of my ideas might actually get in there. That's pretty cool. So to be able to see everything, maybe a bit of LED lighting just to you know spruce it up. No, I'm kidding. That's just disgusting. Um, the engine covers because the engine bay is my favorite favorite place in the car. So I'm super excited to see what you're going to do there to cover it because there is a lot of stuff to cover and a lot of stuff to leave open because it needs to cool. 
and it's just it's just not a very big space. So I'm looking forward to seeing how you're going to work around that and do that. So that's all that's going to happen for what we're going to have a look at for next week. This is all we've got for this week. But Paolo, progress is amazing. Cars looking fantastic. And honestly, this is the highlight of my week to see what goes on here. Paolo, we'll see you next week. Great. Thanks, guys. See you next week.